In December 2011, Farming Smarter held its annual conference and trade show at the Lethbridge Lodge Hotel, bringing together over 250 agricultural professionals and over 20 speakers. The conference served to educate members of the farming community on growing trends, opportunities, and issues facing today's agricultural industry. We now take you to the Farming Smarter Conference to view the presentation of our speakers. Okay, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Brent Nickel, and I lead the growing knowledge side of things with Farming Smarter. I'm quickly coming up with my first full year with the group, um, and this in-row study is one of the things that I've gotten really to sink my teeth into. I come from a precision egg background, so this is sort of a trial that was right up my alley. So some people might be wondering, why are we so interested in in-row seeding? Advancements in precision egg technology. I, mostly everybody in this room right now who farms has some sort of precision egg technologies, whether it's auto guidance, auto steer, whether you're running basic WAS systems, Omnistar, RTK, RTK VRS, there's so many options there now, we have to start putting that to use, okay? The benefits of using last year's stubble with all the benefits we're starting to see with no-till that Mike will go into uh, in our energy trial, we gotta start using what's there. And the big thing, can the cost be justified? As I said before, I come from a sales background in precision egg technology, and I know what it takes to get to the RTK level, right? It starts off, there's an Omnistar, or an upgrade to a John Deere system, and with that, there's usually a subscription fee, okay? Then after that, you have to go to your RTK level, and then you have to decide if you're gonna have a normal base station, or if you're gonna run a VRS system. And with that, sometimes you see again, a subscription fee. Right? These prices add up quick. Then you add in secondary costs such as data plans, cables, cords, everything like that, quickly to go all the way from a basic system to an RTK system, you're looking at it between ten dollars to $12,000, if not more. So granted, when you do get to an RTK system, there are more options you can do outside of in row seeding, like prescription mapping, land and water management as well. Okay? They're all parts of it. So this trial we set up, these are the specifics of it. It was set up outside Rentham, Alberta, we see the canola May 17th, and we harvest it September 13th in the barley stubble that was consistently eight inches high. Okay, we ran two openers, a disc and a pillar laser. We took emergence plant counts June 13th, 2011, weed counts June 30th, and then eye button weather data, which I'll get into a little bit, that ran from May 18th to June 30th. The trial design, here's our exact plot outline. Now the disc and the pillar laser were both set up in replicates of four. As you can see, we have on row, ho, then check. Everything was replicated four times over the area. The trial size, 65 meters by 100 meters. 1.75 meter row spacing. As I said, four replicates, and it was all done on an Omnistar HP subscription. Yeah, Mike's just gonna pull up a couple quick videos of us seeding it in. All these photos that you're seeing now too were taken directly for the site. So in this video particularly, we're doing our inner row seating. This is with the Drisco disc openers. We're directly between. Toby's there watching to make sure everything's in order. Okay. And then this next video is us purposely seating on top of the row. Okay, so as you can see, right here on this outside disc, we are just destroying that stubble. We are making as big of a mess as we can. Now ideally this is what we're going to be looking for. This is our inter row and this is our on row. You guys can already see the difference visually in immersion just by looking at it. So this I button weather data is discussing the concept that when you inter row seed you're creating you know, soil temperature zones. You're creating soda, a microclimate if you will. So what we did is we used 24 sensors spread out through the disc rows and they're placed like so. These ones are direct, placed directly on top of the on-road trial. Then we had another three set up. 
directly in the interrow trial. What results did we see? Well, benefits of research, no difference. Average 14.12 degrees on both sides. Emerges plant counts. When we did our plant counts and we averaged everything out all together, the between row to the on row, there was a 12% difference in emerge plant counts. Okay, you'll see a number two between the between row and the check. Really, that number is not really statistically different. So that's a pretty big note to take. Our yield results, looking at that right there, there's not a huge difference. Yields began to balance out by the end of the time, so there was no difference between on row and inter row. But one of the benefits of research, you find out some things that you're not looking for. And in the yield difference in the openers, there's actually a 14% yield difference between openers. The disc opener yield 14% higher than the hoe opener. Different things you learn. So what have we learned so far? The difference in emerges when we're comparing inter row and on row. As I said earlier, that was our 12% number. Okay, so we are seeing a significant difference there. Yield that right now has been a non-factor. And as we saw with some of the check information as well, as well as long as you're using some sort of guidance with an auto steer, you're probably doing a lot more inter row seeding than you think you are. So this trial is going to continue. Okay, and to expand on it, we're going to be doing it on a field scale level. Okay, at a larger replicate inside a producer's field. We'll be using different double heights. As I said earlier, we're consistent eight inches across. We're going to try to go anywhere from eight to 12 just to try and get our different readings. And we'll also be using RTK when it comes to that system. So something to look forward to, some knowledge you can grow on. Uh, Tony Dagnon, special thanks to him. He uh, let us use his land when we were looking for an area to do this trial. And you're going to see this a lot over the last little while, but just to save the date, this Precision Egg Conference, first of its kind in Western Canada. So keep it in the book. With that being said, I'm going to turn things over to Michael Gretzinger. He's our research coordinator, and he's going to talk a little bit about our energy trial.